Hello everyone, my name is Coca Sexton and thank you for watching my episode inside of this amazing consortium of uh, speakers for the Social Selling Summit. You are in for quite a treat. Uh, you know, within this summit, you're gonna be talking to some of the greatest minds in sales, like Jill Conrath, Jeffrey Gittimer, Ken Krogh, Anthony Ianario, Craig Rosenberg. I mean, the list goes on and on. But of all these speakers who are gonna give you great insights and great information and nuggets that you can pull and take into your jobs, I wanted to talk to you today about something that is very near and dear to my heart. And I think that it's something that resonates with the thought leadership space, as well as the rest of the social selling ecosystem that we're all working in. Because let's face it, the social selling ecosystem is growing and it's growing fast. And every day I see more and more people jumping onto this bandwagon, uh, not in a bad way, like people that are actually honestly excited about leveraging social media in the context of sales. One of these things that I keep talking about is the difference between thought leadership and do leadership. And what do I mean by that? You know, about a, it was, I think it was about a month ago, I was sitting on the couch, it was a weekend, and I was going through my different social feeds and something popped into my head. Um, I think it had been burning inside of me for a while. Uh, but I think at that moment, I was actually, uh, you know, sparked into action. Uh, it was around this whole concept of what a thought leader was. And do I really think of myself as a thought leader? What do I think about the thought leaders in the space? Um, what do I think about thought leadership in general? Um, and I came up with this, this idea uh, that, was, that came out of all these comments that, uh, from this post I made, and it was around do leadership. And it's not so much that you can be a thought leader. I think that what really matters, what we need now in this day and age, in this new digital economy um, where everything is online and things are moving so fast and information is so readily available, is that we don't need thought leadership. We need do leaders. We need people who are willing to actually take these, these thoughts and these visions and move them into, into some direction. So I want to explain to you what the difference is between thought leadership and do leadership from my point of view. And let's start with this. Let's start with vision. You know, thought leadership supplies the vision. It's what they do. They get up on a stage, they have videos, they have blogs, they have other speaking engagements. And what they're really doing is finding ways to supply a vision to an audience, be it around some marketing concept or some sales concept or the, the state of the industry, you know, whatever it may be, you know, there's a time and a place for thought leaders because they're supplying that vision. They lay that foundation for what the rest of us should be aspiring or at least inspired to go and do. They should be making you ask yourself, what it is that you really want? What is it that you want? You know, vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. And when you break that down, it's, it's not something that you have. It's not something that maybe even necessarily is actually tangible and actually in front of you. It's a vision. It's an idea that something could be better. You know, years ago, let's call it four or five years ago, when I made that shift from sales into marketing, it was one of the hardest decisions I had ever made. It was difficult for me to think of myself um, as a marketing professional. I had been a salesperson for years and I had built, you know, I wouldn't say a reputation, but I had built my own ego around being a good salesperson. And I was doing things and I was interested in things that uh, other sales leadership was not too excited about. Um, and that's when the opportunity arose to take my interests and my passions and my, my thoughts around what social media could be for a salesperson. And then how do I convey that to others? And I had the opportunity to take that vision and make it tangible. But vision only takes you so far. You can't only do so much with the vision that uh, is supplied to you that you have on your own. It takes action. Vision without action is just merely a dream. Action is the key to all success. It's true. If you are not acting, you're never going to achieve what it is that you really want. So just imagine what it is that you want. 
Do you want more money? Do you want a better house? Do you want a car? What, what is this that you want? And what are you willing to do to go out and get it? If vision is the art of seeing what's invisible to others, action is making it visible. It's doing what it takes to make it explode in front of the people in front of you. When I was in sales, I was laughed at. I was written up in some cases around my obsession. If uh, I think that's what they called it, my obsession with using social media because I knew that what marketing was handing me as a salesperson wasn't generating what I needed. I needed to go out there and find a way and generate the business myself. And for many of you that you know have heard my story, uh, and for those of you that are not, you know, I lever started leveraging social media in a way that was completely off the charts to my sales management. They had no idea or no understanding of what a social network can do and how you can build your pipeline with that. And because of that, my talk time was low. My number of dials was way below what the average was. But I believe that if I could crack this code on how to use social media to generate my own leads, to generate the awareness of people that were in my market, to become a thought leader in the space and become a resource to my customers, I knew that the compound interest on that would pay massive dividends. And my management thought it was a joke, but I had a vision. And when you have the opportunity to make that vision a reality, you have to take it. You know, when that door to success is standing in front of you and you can't just stare at it, it doesn't work. If you're just staring at a door and you know that there's something great on the other side of it, you're in, you're in the wrong. You have to actually open it to walk through it. It takes action. The fact or process of doing something typically to achieve an aim. Interest. So what's different between thought leadership and interest? It's the same thing. Thought leaders make you interested in something. An interest is something that you want to do. It should ultimately be something that you are going to be doing to make you more successful. You should be interested in your job. You should be interested in your career. You should be interested in these things that are going to be helping you move forward in your life. So what is it that you want to do for real? What are you interested in? Your interests determine your direction. They set your eyes on something that's in the distance. And that might be at the end of the day. It might be at the end of the week. It may be at the end of the month. But you need to start having some long-term goals. What's your plan? Where are you going to be in two, three, five, ten years from now? You have to have a plan. And yet, plan has to be based on whatever your interests are at this point in time. Your interest will change over the course of time. What you want to do, what you think you want to do right now, what could be totally different what you end up doing two or three years from now. But unless you start moving towards those interests, you're never going to know if you don't like it. You're never going to open that next door that's going to show you some new opportunity that's something else that you're going to become interested in. Do you like your job? Well, if not, then do something about it. You have to be able to take action on these things. If you're interested in something new, if you're interested in another line of work, if you're interested in another industry, you have to make, take action to go do that. Because at the end of the day, this is all about doing. What do you want to do? If your interests determine your direction, you have to do something in order to get to those. You have to be able to find those interests and start moving towards them in a way that's going to make them obtainable. Learn some new skills. Meet some new people. Sharpen the saw. You have to be able to do the things that matter to achieve the success that you want in your life. Do you think you're worth more than what you're getting paid? So with that as a, as a foundation, I know that was a lot, but that was the foundation. Let's talk about the four pillars of management. Because I'm assuming that most of you are either sales managers, marketing managers, or you are individual contributors at some point want to be a manager. You're not listening to this because you're trying to waste your time. You're trying to get better. You're trying to obtain the skills to make you do better things. There is people, there's process, and there's technology. You are the people. Who you hire are the people that are going to get the job done. 
Let's not focus on people. Technology, those are the tools. These are the things that you are handed to help you get your job done. For a carpenter, it's the ax, it's the hammer, it's the saw. For a salesperson, it is a computer, a phone, and an email address. And high-speed internet. Every salesperson I know can be successful with just those things. But let's not talk about technology. Because just by giving salespeople, by giving professionals great technology, isn't going to make them successful. You know, Jill Rowley, uh, you know, who you're going to hear from in this, in, this, uh, in this summit is, you know, she's got this great saying, um, you know, a fool with a tool is still just a fool. And I don't know if she actually coined that or not, but she says it all the time. And it's true. If you think about it, if you just start handing technology to, to your teams, if you just start seeing the next shiny object and playing around with it, you're never going to be successful. Technology is great. Don't get me wrong. You need it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to help you, but it's all about the process. So let's focus on process. What is process? It's a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. The process is being overlooked. And this is what's actually getting done. When we talk about doing, it's all in the process. The process is the planning, it's the execution, and it's the measurement. And the measurement is another thing that is being overlooked most times, especially when it comes to the process. When you start out planning, you need to understand what it is you want to achieve. What is that goal? We were just talking about this. What is that North Star that you're going towards? Is it a sales quota? Is it a number of leads generated? Is it you know, a business impact that you're trying to change? You need a plan to get there. Once you set that mark and say, this is where I want to go, back plan it until you can figure out to where you are today. And then it's all about execution. But you have to be able to also measure that stuff along the way. And most people don't measure it fast enough and they get off course. And the next thing they know they have to correct and they've lost months, years of their lives. Let's look at a typical sales process. You go from generating interest, maybe it's through marketing, through your own activities. Uh, you bring them into the funnel, you give them a demo, you know, to become a, a qualified opportunity. You work that opportunity. You close the business, you deliver the service or product, and then you make them extremely happy customers. That's the process. There's lots of little stuff in there, and you're going to hear from all these other speakers about ways to make that process um, more bite-sized. But at the end of the day, you're trying to get somebody that is interested or has a problem that you can solve, and you're trying to deliver on that, on that issue and solve their problem. Things aren't very different in the social selling world. Within the social selling process, you have social, you have all of these tools, you have the, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, every other social network out there that your buyers are spending time on, just out there working in, in the ether. When you learn to leverage social media in a way that continues to broadcast and engage your audience, you start realizing that your funnel starts opening up. And once that starts happening in the social selling process, you grab their attention and then you move to a traditional sales model. Get them on the phone, set an appointment, sending emails. You, at some point you have to take it out of social and move it back into an offline capacity. Deals aren't being closed on, on social media. Sure, there's gonna be examples of where that happens, but most business is not gonna be done on social media. Social media is the entry point. It is the moment that you are able to understand and listen and engage with the people who are in your space in a way that allows other people that may have a problem that you can solve find you or you can find them. And then once that happens, you move into these other models where you get them on the phone, you set appointments, you go meet them, whatever that may be, whatever that you know falls within that traditional sales model for your company, you don't change that because that process is probably working well. And if not, then your sales manager is work, working on that, working that through. Social media is all about you. It's all about how are you leveraging these tools that have been given to you, that you have access to, these social profiles, these networks that you work in, 
to pull these people into the traditional model and then eventually into a close. Social media is the building block. You should be learning to leverage these tools and understand them and hack them and manipulate them and dominate these spaces. When I was in sales, I made most of my number through social media. And my bosses were, they were, well, one, they were appalled, but at the time they were amazed at it. They just didn't understand it. They thought it was a trend, that it was some fluke, that I was somehow gaming the system. But it works and it's continuing to work and we have data and we have, you know, case studies and we're seeing more and more about this online every single week. Social media has an ROI. When you're leveraging tools like LinkedIn to build your profile, to connect with buyers, to find the industries that are interested in your product or service. When you're on Twitter listening and engaging and, and posting and getting updates that are getting engaged, you're continuing to widen that funnel and to drive awareness. You're building your own thought leadership in the process, but you're doing something with it. There's actually a business value that you're trying to accomplish. And that is another difference between thought leadership and do leadership. It's not just about talking. It's not about the last selfie you took. It's not about, you know, what you're eating for lunch. It's, it's not so much about you as it is about how you're changing the industry, how you are helping your customers do something great with their own business. You know, when I first got into marketing, I was a salesperson at heart and I didn't really understand what it was that I was supposed to do. You know, I knew that I was brought on to help build a social marketing, you know, uh, campaigns and to help the internal salespeople understand how to use social media. But I didn't know the first thing about marketing. But with that sales mentality, with the drive that I knew in my DNA that I had to carry a bag and that, you know, if the average lifespan of a social media manager was six to eight months, which at the time, that's what it was. I had looked into it because, and at that point, I was even more afraid to jump into marketing uh, in a social aspect. You know, if the lifespan is six to eight months, I had to learn to find a way to create value out the gate. So I worked really hard to find ways to map social media to revenue. I knew it as an individual salesperson. I knew that when I was in sales, if I did, you know, 20, 30 posts a week into social media that I would drive people into my profiles, I would be able to engage with them and somehow hit, you know, a portion of my number outside of the other things that were happening. But I knew that social media could do that for me. I didn't know if that could work for everybody else. I assumed that most of them were doing it on some level, but I had to find a way to measure it. So going from a blog post or a social update into the funnel and being able to track that within the CRM, that's when the light bulbs went off. And that's when we realized that social selling actually had an ROI. But even then it had, it had its issues. How often can you be posting updates? How often can you be engaging with your audience? Um, and you know, how do you curate all of that content? without repeating yourself over and over again and sounding like a broken record, because then at that point, people put their hands up and say, enough is enough. So I looked around and I found out that, hey, there was this new thing, this new you know, trendy topic on, on, on the internet called content marketing. And I went out and I found some of the greatest people doing content marketing at the time. And I saw companies that were doing this well. And I saw, you know, individuals who were able or willing to share their research and their understanding and the, their tests on what was actually driving, you know, value for either their companies or the companies they worked for within content marketing. And then that's when the next light bulb went off. And I said, if I can generate content, if I can create stuff that is valuable to my audience, and I leverage social media as my amplifier, leads will start pouring in. I just believed it. I didn't know, I mean, it's at some face value, all these other companies were saying it, but most of them were still really um, determined and fixed on, on email marketing. You know, social media was still a part-time job for most people, but I knew I had to add value. I knew that I had to find a way to generate revenue in excess of what my company thought I was capable of. 
And I think at the time, they weren't expecting very much. They wanted me to build a social program for their company. They wanted me to make them to drive awareness and to build uh, you know, their place in the ecosystem. And I was able to do that. But at the end of the day, the pressure was on me to actually find ways to track this back to revenue. And I talked to other social media people and they, some of them had some great insights. Some of them still hadn't figured it out themselves. So I took this concept of content marketing and social media and I brought it together. And I started finding ways to create content that I could then broadcast through social media, leverage the employees, leverage my network in a way that then expanded that reach even further that then drove those inquiries, drove those interested parties back to a landing page that I had created and then tracked those individually within a social within a, a social stream of the CRM. So at any given day, week, month, quarter, I would be able to run a report and say, what happened from social media? What hit this specific landing page that then generated leads? Now we have much more sophisticated uh, you know, processes in place, but the idea was that we had to find a process. And if you don't have a you know, marketing automation tool or if you, know, you don't have the resources to build specific tracking mechanism, have one landing page for your social channels. Drive all the traffic from social media to those channels. Then watch what happens. Because anything that touches that landing page, you know came from a social channel. Because that's the only way that you're pushing traffic to it. And if you're seeing it convert, then you need to find ways to invest in that. And I'm telling you, it will convert. If you're using social media in the right way, if you're building the right audiences, if you are engaging those people in a better way, in a way that is authentic and is education to them, they're gonna want, to, they're gonna want your content. Because what I found at the very end was that it's not magic. It's not rocket science. Content in social media is a revenue machine and you just have to understand it and embrace it. I went talking to other companies. You know, I went talking to um, you know, other customers of ours and I was explaining to them the things that we were doing within social and content marketing. And many of them jumped on it. And I took the best practices. You know, if, uh, you, know, if you don't know uh, Jason Miller, he's in here at LinkedIn as well, but he used to work at Marketo. Brilliant mind in the space of content marketing. How do you create big rocks and then break them down and then distribute them to generate, generate revenue? I took that model and I then applied it to social. How do I create content that then can get broken down and pushed out through social channels that then drive leads back? You have to find a way to generate content in, a, in enough of a capacity that you can distribute it. Distribution is, is the hardest problem for most companies. And turn it into revenue. You have to embrace this. It is a winning combination for any business. Social media and content. Email open rates are declining every single year. You have to find ways to engage your audience in such a way, and social is that place. It comes down to training. At the end of the day, with all of the stuff that's being talked about in the Social Selling Summit, the stuff that I'm talking about beside, you know, thought leadership and do leadership and how you leverage social media as a salesperson, as a marketing professional, it takes training. You're going to get 15, 20 hours of content within the summit. And you're probably already listening to a number of other webcasts on a regular basis. You're reading ebooks, you're reading blog posts. You know, this is all training for you. You have to be able to find ways to apply this to your existing company, to your existing job, your existing career path. Skills are only developed by hours and hours of repetition. That's the training. The object of training is to develop skills. And when you become extremely skilled in, in manufacturing or producing content that generates revenue, when you become extremely skilled in leveraging your social media channels because you've built an audience that is receptive to what you're saying, that takes the training to get there. And once you train hard enough, the skills to build, 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 to